Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm back again. Your main, main, the real Bill Real. I want to take a few minutes and uh, just drop this video to give you guys an update uh, as to what is going on with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you haven't figured it out by now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the team that I pay attention to. <sighs> Where do I start? I just want to start this video out by saying uh, anybody who is coming against Greg Schiano for the changes that are happening at one buck, you're crazy. And this is the reason why I say you're crazy. When he took over the team, he had a few players on the team that were bad apples. Now, when I say bad apples, I'm talking about players who don't respect the coaches, talk back to the coaches, show up late, do not show up for uh, workouts, do not show up for lifting, have incidents um, outside of football. Um, and we're talking about Aqib Tlaib. This guy had anger management issues. This guy had domestic violence issues. This guy really was supposed to be in prison because of pulling the gun and beating up the cab driver and just a, um, a laundry list of things that this guy had done while a buccaneer. Uh, he was supposed to get traded while uh, Raheem was the coach. But the reason, reason why Raheem got fired is due to the fact that he had no control over the locker room. That's how you go 4-12. and 12. Also, he had a guy by the name of LeGarrette Blunt, And this guy uh, obviously didn't have uh, what you call the professional touch. Uh, and he also had problems with anger management as well. Uh, this is the guy that, you know, punched a Boise State player after, the, after they had lost. And, you know, uh, just his overall attitude – I don't believe was conducive for the team. Okay. If you have a guy who feels that he's uh, more important than other people, he's going to have a tendency to have uh, this attitude like, Hey, you owe me, you know, I'm doing you a favor by playing on your team. Okay. So kiss my butt. So uh, obviously uh, anybody who follows the Buccaneers um, knows that those two guys were shipped off. Then you had another guy by the name of Kellen Winslow Jr., okay, um, who said he wasn't going to show up for lifting. He wasn't going to show up for um, uh, workouts. He wasn't going to show up for uh, OTA, none of this stuff, okay? He didn't feel that he needed to do any of that. And as you see, he got shipped off, okay? In fact, since he left the Bucks, I think he's gone to three different teams since then, okay? When you're tossed around like that, you're not good. I don't care what anybody says. OK. Uh, oh, there, there there are a few exceptions to that rule. OK, because there are some players that have been tossed around and they just didn't get any respect. After looking at the last uh, last night's game of Anquan Bolden, uh, that is clearly an example of uh, a player who is good. OK, uh, from FSU uh, that my favorite college team. Uh, so back to the point, back to um, the Buccaneers. Uh, the latest situation is the benching of Josh Freeman. Josh Freeman had a good year the second year that he played. The second year he played, the Buccaneers were 10 and 6. And in fact, they, lost, they missed going to the playoffs because Aqib Talib was suspended for some type of shenanigans during that time. And the lowly Lions were able to beat the Buccaneers. When they beat the Buccaneers, it threw them off uh, from being able to make the playoffs. In fact, that year, the Packers barely got in, and they ended up going on to winning the Super Bowl that year. So Josh Freeman has only had one good year under his belt. Everything else, they were losing seasons. In the last nine games, I'm pretty sure you've heard this statistic where they had uh, lost eight. That's squarely on the shoulders of Josh Freeman. 
okay so I'm making this video to explain to you what has been going on uh, at the Buccaneers headquarters you have a coach who has come in who wants to do things his way which is hard nose hard hitting he has hit a brick wall in Roger Goodell, who does not want the Buccaneers to play that brand of football. He wants them to play a brand of takedown football where the helmet is not used really in any way or the elbow is not used in any way. Just uh, basically wants everybody to shoot at the legs and just kind of wrap them up like a wrestler does uh, for the tackle. Okay, so that goes against the Buccaneers style of play. And anybody who's ever watched the Buccaneers play for the last 10, uh, 10, 13 years or so, they will tell you that the hardest hitting team in the NFL, they are the Bucks. Okay, anybody knows that. Well, since they're not able to play that brand of football and in intimidate receivers uh, and tight ends that come across the middle or who attempt to make plays, um, the defense has been forced to not be as good as they could be. But I don't really have any issues with any of the players on the um, on the defense. I think Revis is playing well. I think Deshaun Golson is, is playing well also, uh, even though he did make a, a hit on one of the Patriots wide receivers. And immediately after he made the hit, he turned around to look to see is he going to get hit with a 15-yard uh, penalty. So uh, they've obviously got into his head and gotten him to play differently, play softer than what he's used to playing, which totally changes the dynamic of the game. Um, I like to bring up something that most people are not aware of, uh, which is the fact that uh, Greg Schiano inherited Josh Freeman. He inherited LeGarrette Blunt. He inherited Aqib Tlaib. He inherited um, Kellen Winslow Jr. And he inherited a few other players that were not good players on the Buccaneers. And this coach has gotten rid of those players because they're not productive or they don't have leadership or they don't have good attitudes. And I'm glad that he's doing that. And I think replacing Josh Freeman with the rookie is a good idea for two reasons. For one, it can help give credibility to Greg Schiano and his ability to scout and draft productive players. Okay. And two, if it does not go the way that he wants it to go, remember Greg Schiano used to coach Rutgers. Who do you think Greg Schiano wants to be his starting quarterback if John if Mike Glennon does not pan out to be the type of quarterback that he wants? You guessed it. Johnny Football. Yes. I could see a season where Mike Glennon is put out to throw to two average Receivers. Yes, Mike Williams is an average receiver. How many times do you see Mike Williams break away from the defender and he's five to ten yards down the field away from the defender? Or how many times do you see him just say, Hey, throw it in my direction, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it. Throw it, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch that jump ball. You don't see that. How many times do you see people double team Vincent Jackson and that's it? He's out of the play. The Buccaneers have no tight end. Well, they have Crabtree coming back. So Crab might do something. Crab is 50-50. So the point I'm making is one of the reasons why the Buccaneers are suffering is due to the fact that their wide receivers are not that good. They're going to have to force them to be good, or they're going to have to force the officials to call pass interference plays, uh, calls, because that's what's happening. If you're jamming, holding, pulling on Mike Williams' jersey, and Vincent Jackson's jersey, jamming them, doing things that are illegal and they're not getting the calls, the quarterback is going to look bad. The quarterback is going to throw interceptions because the guy's being interfered with. And I've noticed this. So if you see all of a sudden the Buccaneers receivers getting pass interference calls, 
by the officials, you will then know that it was all designed to get Josh out of there. Like I told you, there's a conspiracy against Hebrew quarterbacks. You will know that they were not going to side with him. Another reason why Josh is not the starting quarterback anymore is the fact that the guy has demons. And when I say demons, he has alcohol and cocaine demons. If you drink alcohol and have a problem with alcohol, if you do cocaine and have a problem with cocaine, it's going to affect your performance. It's going to have you not showing up for the team picture. It's going to have you not showing up for a football camp that's named after you. So I'd say in a heartbeat, replace that guy who has problems with substance abuse and put in a young, big, hungry quarterback who has better touch than him who is Mike Glennon. So everybody who's getting on Greg Schiano's case about straightening up the ship and improving a team, I think you need to take a look at facts. You need to take a look at this team. The Buccaneers are loaded with talent. But if they don't have a quarterback to execute the plays and throw the ball accurately, it's going to affect everyone. It's going to make the defense play harder. It's going to screw up everything. So I want everybody to understand something. I think that it was in the plans to make John Mike Glennon the starting quarterback from the beginning of the season. I don't think Greg Schiano was sold on Josh Freeman. And I think there were things that happened that made people realize this. And that's one of the reasons why just a few days ago, Greg Schiano came out in a press conference and said that Josh Freeman is my quarterback. The next day he changed quarterbacks so don't ride Greg Schiano too hard because the guy is doing everything that he can to have a productive team and if replacing the quarterback with another quarterback that's yeah younger but um, a good quarterback hey I'm all for it so um, that's my take on the whole entire issue I wish Josh the best Uh, Josh needs to get treatment for his alcohol abuse for his drug abuse and uh he needs a fresh start somewhere else but if he doesn't get those things corrected in his life he will not be successful and he will stink it up and um the guy has been a horrible quarterback uh for the buccaneers um but that's my video for today and that's my take on everything and that's what i think is going on um at the bucks so go bucks talk to you later peace